Diana. Thank you all for tuning in on this snowy day. Um, I want to, I'm going to move my camera around so you can see better, hopefully. I'm on my own today, so I'm not going to be able to see your questions as easily. My helper is not with me. So if you have questions today, please leave them in the comments section and I will answer them if I don't happen to see them on the screen. I'm using my iPhone to do this and it sits up pretty high off my table. So while I'm painting, I can't really see your questions. I wanna show you my setup here though. And oh, by the way, this video will be uh, left online. You'll be able to go back and look at it if you want to. Hi, Kathy Sweeney, how are you? And please share it with your friends. And uh, like I said, if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments and I will answer it after this is over. We have a nice snowy day here in Virginia. And I wanted to do this because I wanted to show you different ways to use different materials to accomplish what you want to do. Not everybody has an art store in their house like I do. Let me show you what's above my picture, so I'm gonna tilt my camera. So I've moved my small travel pastel box over, and I'll be using some of those. And then here are my paintings on my drafting table. I can move this down some, so you'll have to let me know if you can't see what I'm doing. Or I may have to move my pastel box off the table. Whoops, gotta keep my fingers out of there too. Okay, so here we are. This is the reference photo, which I will leave online too. I've had this photo for a very long time. We started this painting I worked on it a little bit. The last uh, workshop that we did online back in January, the video is not available. I did not save it. It's not on YouTube and it's not on Facebook and it's not on my computer, I looked. <laughs> so I don't remember exactly what we did then, but I'm gonna to talk to you about a few things today that hopefully will help you with your work and if I don't answer all your questions, like I said, just leave me a comment question and I'll answer it. I do wanna tell you, this, uh, this wolf, her name is Cree. We have painted her here before. She lives at Wolf Sanctuary in Colorado. The photograph I've had for a very long time, and sometimes you will come across photographs or things you want to paint and you don't exactly know how you're going to do those, how you're going to accomplish it. That happens, that has happened to me throughout my life and so I'll save it and I'll keep it in a file and then someday my skills will catch up with what I want to paint or I'll learn something along the way that helps me solve a problem with the painting. I've always liked this. Now what I'll probably do with the finished painting is make a print and donate it to Wolf Sanctuary. I like to help them out every year for their annual uh, thing that they have, fundraiser, to help them raise money to take care of these animals. So let's talk a little bit about how I created this. This is also on pastel mat, and I'm really, I like pastel mat. I think velour has been a favorite of mine for eight or nine years, and it's really uh, kind of different to be using pastel mat, but there are a couple of things I found out about pastel mat. By using pastel mat, it allows me a greater range of pastels that I can use. And I love pastels. I love the soft pastels because of their vibrant colors. Hi, 
Linda. Hi, Rebecca. Thanks for tuning in. It's good to see you today. I really have missed all you guys. So the soft pastels, the unisons, the sennelliers, the Giraud's, which are a personal favorite of mine, they have, uh, and Terry Ludwig too, a huge color range that you won't find with Rembrandt's and some of the others that I use on velour paper. And the softer pastels are harder to use on velour paper, but not on pastel mat. So the procedure is the same or very similar to how we would do on other surfaces. I'm going to do more things on pastel mat, and if you think that's a good idea, leave me a comment. Hi, B. Good to see you. So, hopefully, uh, I don't think you can. I'm gonna have to move my camera so you can see what I'm doing. So number one, I'm gonna move my big pastel box out of the way. What if I have to? And then I'm gonna move these up so you can see more of what I'm doing. Emilsa. Hi Pat. I'm really glad to see you guys. So I'm going to tape this down. Now my, um, let's see, my pastel mat is mounted on a board because it tends to be kind of floppy. Let's see if I can get it to stick down. And uh, I find that inconvenient. So here's a couple of things I've found. And I also have a, another one that I've drawn off. So when I start to work, I do the same thing we do on velour. Oh, I'm sorry if you can't uh, hear me, Rebecca. We're working on getting a new microphone, but we don't have that yet. So I drew in my wolf and I used a black pastel pencil. In this case, I used a fabric castel pit. And I put in the white uh, areas with a white uh, general pencil. So we're going to be working on both of these pieces of paper. So I'm going to set this over here. Uh, so what I did was I put in the darks. I marked the white areas. And then I put in the medium values. So the point of this exercise is to use as much color as I can without filling the tooth of the paper. Now when I did the background on my wolf, I used a lot of colors. Cold in Wichita, okay. <laughs> so I, um, these are unison colors. Just to show you, I filled the background in. You can pick any colors you want. And blend them in. You can use your fingers to blend them in. Or you can use a blending stump. Whatever works. 
If you don't have any unison colors, you can also use new pastels. Just whatever color you have, use that. little bit of darker color. Now I'm not going to go over the white fur. I like that. Go get my pastel box back. So I just pick out some pretty colors and we'll put in a nice background. I love that. It sits right on the surface. Makes a beautiful, beautiful background. So here's my reference photo again. I can put in, there's a little, I see some purple. This is a Munio. Um, this is a great brand of pastel. The Munio is uh, affordable. You can get them at Jerry's. And they run sales on them quite a bit. Let's make that a little more purple. So I love it. Pastel mat holds a lot of layers of color. Okay. So we have a little background in and that's going to help us get something around the ears. We're going to work a little bit on this and then I'm going to switch to the one that's almost finished and show you what I'm doing with that. <clears throat> so, I want to make sure that my eyes show up. So this is a black new pastel. Generally, I do the eyes with pastel pencils or new pastels. So I have a couple of new pastels. This is 253. This is 207. Two sixty six red. But if you don't have new pastels, you can use pencils too. I'm 
let's put a little highlight in the eye. So again, here's a new pastel black. Really like this. I really like new pastels. If you could only get like one thing, I would get a set of new pastels and maybe something else you could get would be some Carbothello pastel pencils and that's really all you would need to make a painting. Okay, so for this eye, let's use um, some pastel pencils. So I'm going to color in my eye with, this is a Conte pencil number seven. And this is a number 17. Well, somebody asked me yesterday, and then for the light, let's use this is a Conte 47. If they could use this picture, I don't mind if you use picture. I don't know who actually took the picture. Wolf Sanctuary let me use it. So just give them the credit. So we have a pretty good, a pretty good eye with just using pencils. And let's put a little highlight right there. Now it's purple around this eye. So I'm going to use, let's see. I have a this is a uh, purple unison, but it's awful big and chunky. So I don't want to use that. This is a purple pastel pencil. bit of this black over it or another good choice would be some gray not dark enough this is black pastel pencil and let's perk the color up a little bit with the purple so the black grays down the bright purple. Put that back in and now we have a nice a nice eye. Hi Faye, how are you? Now let's do this nose. I'll just show you what kind of great Color we can get on this nose. So instead of using black, I'm going to use um, 305 blue, the new pastel. So I'm going to color in where I see the dark areas on my reference photo. I'm going to use some black. I really wish you could all just come sit in my house. We could all paint. I really, really miss that. 
Now the nose, I could see kind of blue and purple. So I'm gonna use my purple pastel pencil. Oh, I really like that. I'm gonna leave a spot for the white. There's a light highlight here. Got a little big so I can take that down like that. And that's kind of a light blue, so. I'm looking in my box for a blue. That one's too bright. I like that one. Now I'll tell you, and this is my 305 again. I can go over that real lightly. Blend that together. Darken the nostril just a little bit. And it needs a little bit of highlight. So I'm going to use my pastel pencil for that. Thank you, Belinda Bass. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad you're enjoying this. Share the video with your friends. And it'll be online afterwards. So I can put a little highlight there. The number one thing, this one's gotten too big, so I can come back with my pencil and kind of play it down a little bit. The number one thing that's important is your value. It doesn't matter so much what color you're using, it's the value. And the value means the degree of light and dark on your painting. So let's put in his mouth. This is black. I'm going to use the blue under his nose and I'm going to modify it with adding a little purple over it. And there is a little bit of pink there. This is a new pastel. This is uh, 416 Dark Rose. And I can put that there. And there's also a little bit here. So he's looking pretty good. Now, I should say she's looking pretty good. Hi, Diane. Glad to have you here. So in this center of the wolf's face, I can take my black new pastel, or I can take my black pastel pencils, whichever one. So I want to put the dark in first, okay? This will work, we do it when we do velour. It will work with sanded paper. Now 
Now I don't want to lose the white area. It's kind of hard to get your whites back if you lose them on this surface. So I'm going to put it in. so I don't lose it. And then I'm going to put a medium value in here. I don't want a green. Uh, and I can do this a couple of ways. There's a purple tone there that I like. So let's see if this will work. Ooh, I like that. Then it gets a little more gray. And I'm just picking colors out of my block box. Now that's too light, so I need something darker. find a darker gray this is um, 259 new pastel So I'm putting that gray in this purple, and it may not seem like it's going to work, but I'm going to show you that it will. And you can use your finger, you can use your stump, I don't like the stump as much, it seems to take the color off. And I have uh, something else to show you that I found along the way, too. So I've lost. My edge. So I'm going to put this back in. Okay, so now we're going to add the hair in. So the hair on the wool seems to be a mixture of black and light gray hair with um, some white mixed in. This is a, like I said, a Faber-Castell pencil. It's not as dark as I would like. So I'm going to go back to my new pastel stick, which is the blackest, in my opinion, of course, the blackest black you can get. You can see how much darker that is. So I can add, make sure the hair goes in the direction that it grows. And I can use the pointed end. And then add in some light hair. I'm going to use my white charcoal pencil.
wanted to mention too, um, even though I usually get this question, can you use pan pastels? Yes, you can. I personally just, I don't use them, but they would work really well on this surface. You can go back and add as many hair as you need to to get it like you want. But if you add the darks, save your whites, save a space for your whites, add your medium colors it'll work out really well. Now on this side, we would do the same thing. So I wanna mark the edge of where the darker hair is gonna be. And I want this to be really dark. Now, another way to mix gray is to take two complementary colors. My pastel mats don't stand in. I agree, Liz. Painting is the best thing to do when it's snowing or on any day. If I take, these are kind of, I'm looking for a brown kind of color and a blue. Let's see if this works. If I put, these are unison. And then I go over that grid in it. So what I have is kind of a complicated gray color, which I like. I'm put some more brown on that. So purple and yellow are complements, or violet and yellow, and uh, blue and orange are complements. This is kind of an orangey brown. I think it's going to be too strong, but I actually kind of like that. So we've created a medium value, and then we have our white goes there. So let's put in our white. Now 
And this is dark gray pastel matte, by the way. And if you get something on it you don't like, I'm going to show you how to fix that too. So we'll put that in for our white for now and we'll add more layers of that as we go along. So I'm going to put these back in my box for now. This is a dark gray, new pastel. I don't think that's strong enough. Now, let's add some hair underneath the eye. This is a light gray Carbothello. It's actually a my new pastel white 211. Let's make that a little brighter. Now, then working upward, I pay close attention to my reference photo. Add in my hair. And use whatever light colors you like. I have, um, I have four or five sets of pastel pencils. I think I have them all. And they each have a different hardness value. Carbothello runs in the middle, the middle range. So they're always a good choice. I have recently added um, some Caran d'Ache and here's a few of those. Um, They're very soft, um, so and they're a little more expensive. But because they're soft, they add more pigment to your paper. 
a really another good really good good brand are the pit pastel pencils I like those too and the thing about pastels is each brand has a different color range now let's suppose you get this far and you don't like what you're doing let's say you don't like it I'm going to show you what you can do about that I have a wet piece of paper towel. Now I want to um, tell you that pastel matte is cork based. I'm not sure what that means, but what it does mean is you can't use heat on it. So you can't dry mount it and you can't use a blow dryer on it, but you can use wet media. So let's say I decide I don't like this color. I can take my wet paper towel And I can remove the color. Whoops, got the nose there too. I can take it off and just wait till it dries and start over again. I think that is a tremendous advantage to this paper. The more I use it, the better I like it. I didn't like it in the beginning very much, but the more I use it, the better I like it. Now I'm going back to my original painting. And show you some other things. Okay, good. This is where you can you can see this area. So I've done my background. I've done up in this area. So now I'm going to show you some other things that will work. I like this area in the in the wolf. Let's go over here first. This is not dark enough. I added some purple to it and it's not dark enough. So I'm going to use my black new pastel. To darken up. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I don't know what I would do without art. I don't know what other people do. I love to paint. And I have also been experimenting a lot with sandpaper. which I'd love to film for you. It's a little difficult getting it just so. So this has helped a lot to add that dark color there. And I can add a little bit there. Now you can see I've started to put here, I wipe this off with water. I started to put some purple up in there. So instead of using a purple pastel, I'm going to use a purple pastel pencil. This is a Conte one. 
Carbothella makes a darker one. And I think this is the same color it is. It's a 335 Carbothello. So I could add more purple. I like Conte a little better on here for this purpose because it leaves less residue. As far as white pencils go, you can use the general, you can use a 100 Carbothello, anything like that would be fine. Then I'm looking for my pencil. Actually, I think a pale lavender would be better there. This one's not quite light enough. Let's try another. Sometimes it's really hard to find exactly the color you want. Not sometimes, about all the time it is. This is a gray, but it's not quite. Light enough, but not bad. Um, let's try blue. That's kind of pretty. I like that quite a bit. Now what else could I use besides this? I could use This is a pink new pastel sandalwood which is very pretty. So you can use whatever you would like, whatever fits. in your budget and what you have at home. I do like this. This one's darker. Okay, back over here. I wanted to talk about that area. And I do try to keep my pencils separated. So I can find them. This is the white again. So I can go over what I did and pull out a few lighter areas. Thank you, Belinda. Um, be thinking of some questions that you have when we get to the end of our time together. I'll set that time aside and for you to type in your questions.
down here. The hair is a bit brighter. I'm going to show you a tool for blending. I actually heard about these from Jason Morgan. This is it's from the Bargain Depot, and I think it's one of those things you use on an iPad. It's a stylus, but look what it does. Here's one. It's got a little rubber point on it. And if you take the top off, of course it's not going to, there we go. This has a bigger end and this is a smaller end. This is great for blending. Would you believe it? So I can come in and blend. But it doesn't take the pigment off like the paper blender does. This is marvelous. And then you just clean it by wiping it off. So if you want to use the smaller end, you can go in and blend little areas. I think this is the coolest thing ever. It comes with four, I think four in a package, and it's like $10 or less. You can get it on Amazon. And then this goes on the top. So it's called a high sensitivity stylus from Bargain Depot. It also has replacement tops. And buy one package you never need anymore. So that's a little hint. Thank you, Jason Morgan. Isn't that a cool idea? Okay, back to our wolf. This area on my reference photo is very gray, but I don't want to just be plain gray. I want it to have some color definition. So I'm using my violet number five pastel pencil to base coat it with. So here again, we can base coat, we can paint the whole painting with pastel pencil. We don't need any soft pastels. We don't have any. We can just paint a whole painting with pastel pencils. So I'm going to paint this purple in. cross hatch it. I'm going to add the brighter, I love this color. This is number 26 contact pencil. I love it. It's a brighter red violet. I can blend this in with my finger. Now I want to add some brown there. This is Conte number, number, I can't read the number, hmm, maybe 10, is that correct? It's an old one. Let's use the number seven. I have lots of those. Now if I wanted to mute it down, could add something with a yellow base into it, which grays it down.
but it, because you're using two complementary type colors, it makes them so much more colorful. And then I can take my I can take my white pencil. I can take a 105 Carbothello, which has more of a gold tone. If you don't have one of those, you can use a Conte number 47. Um, I'd like to think uh, also in the these are clumps of hair. Keep that shape in mind as you're coloring them. I'm going to lighten it up with my white. Now on this outer edge is pure white. Because I don't want it to get tainted, so I started with white. And then as I came in, I added the purple. Now here I want to use a gray. So this is my 720 Carbothello because I don't want the hair to be as prominent. But I'm still working in clumps. Now, if I find that it's not quite bright enough, I can get another pastel pencil that's a little lighter. Let's see. This is a 700. Let's see if that's... few white strokes to that. Here again. Think clumps of hair. Also understand, I did not paint this in an afternoon. The way I normally work is I'll paint for a few hours and then go do something else, get away from it, come back to it, look at it again. For instance, I see up in here it needs a darker brown. This is a new pastel 353. It has a slight purple tint to it because it's a Mars violet and the color works really well with the purple that we used.
Because when you get away from your work, okay, that doesn't work. It's too red, so I'm not going to use it. I need something. Darker. So over a period of days, thinking about a lot of times, I don't know if you guys do, but I paint in my sleep. I dream about it. And it's I can solve the problems of a painting sometimes when I'm asleep. And then when I wake up, I can use those ideas. This works really well, so I know that I'm going to keep it because it has a certain amount of violet in it, so that looks that looks nice. I see this hair is too prominent right there, so I'm going to take it out. But I need a few more white hairs here, so I'll put those in. Now, if you'll notice in the muzzle, there are a little scratch there. No individual white hairs. I did not want, if I put white hair here, it would... It would be too much and would draw away from the rest of the painting, I think. It doesn't need to be the individual hairs here, just the white. Again. This needs some color, so find So I like that that adds a lot of color there. Now I want to make sure I know where the edge of the white fur is going to be that's going to go out in the background. And then down here
Make sure your hair is varied. As Miss Leslie Harrison taught me, make sure they don't look like soldiers all lined up in a row. Now if that gets not dark enough, go back. You can use your purple. You can use a dark gray. Anything that has a darker value to it. And use as much color as you like. Holly, thanks for tuning in. If y'all don't know, Holly Youngblood Cannon, look her up on Patreon and on Facebook. Has a is she is a tremendous resource for photographs. She has the most stunning photographs of anything you could imagine. I um, just love her work. Join her Patreon site. I really, Holly, I think your foxes are my favorite. You have some of the cutest fox photographs. I love to paint foxes. And wolves. Did you guys guess that? I have, I find when I, I'm starting to get tired, then I don't paint as well, and that's when I need to quit. I need to go do something else, and then come back. Some people are gifted enough to be able to paint for hours at a time, and not get tired. I am not one of those. I have also learned that the normal human being has about 90 minutes of productive time before their brain kind of checks out. So after 90 minutes, go do something and then come back to what you're doing. It takes a while to get into the zone of what you're doing. So give yourself, I, I forget the, my husband would know the time limit on that. But I do know that after 90 minutes, it's time to take a break. Give yourself a break. Let me take a look at my list and make sure I've told you everything I want to tell you. And if that gets to be too detailed, just, you know, go over it. I think the muzzle needs to be wider. So what I'm going to do is take the end of my new pastel add some color I like that I also see there's a little it gives her expression 